Halftime not close. Rams up 24 to 3. Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy here, and the Seahawks have contributed greatly to their own demise with a series of mistakes, Trump. They'll have to get over that if they're going to get back. Yeah, you're in right, it. and it started with the first offensive play by the Seattle Seahawks. Normally, a very, very sure-handed Kurt Warner turned the ball over for the Seahawks, and the Rams went in to score. When you're traveling on the road and playing in the NFL, you want things to go your way, but as you can see on this sweep, Kurt Warner has hit a little bit, but he really just loses control of the football. Michael Stewart picks it up. The Rams go in and for, score the first touchdown of the afternoon. And then, after a 66-yard drive, the Seahawks were looking good. Stauffer tries to throw it to a completely covered John L. Williams. Stewart, same guy in a fumble recovery, makes the interception. He runs it back 37 yards. And again, the Seattle Seahawks just hurt themselves. That was 66 yards. And then this is the haymaker, the left hook. Fourth down and in inches. John Robinson prefers the touchdown as opposed to the field goal. Now 24 to 3, and you put Seattle in a spot where if the Rams don't turn the ball over, if the Seahawks don't come, come up with some interceptions, I think the Seahawks are basically out of this football game. Well, I think they're going to get a lot of chances to intercept because I don't think Everett's going to throw it a lot that if may he doesn't be true. have to. That may be true. As we pointed out at the outset, the Seahawks came in wanting to run the ball to keep away from the strength of the Ram defense, which is the pass rush. And, of course, they've got a young quarterback. But now we've got nothing but problems for Seattle. We'll see what they have to do when we come back with the second half kickoff. But first, a word from the National Football League with the Rams in the lead 24-3. The table of miscues. You really don't want to beat yourself in the NFL, Don. But as you can see in the first half, Seattle has done exactly that. The Rams haven't produced a great deal of offense, but then they haven't needed a great deal of offense. As you can see, the Seahawks had the ball for longer. But the turnovers are the big key in the first half. This kickoff is sponsored by Budweiser, the king of beers. Norm Johnson into the ball for the Seattle Seahawks. Hits a high spinner downfield. That'll be taken at about the five-yard line. Charles White runs it back and gets to the 21-yard line, and a penalty marker comes in. Darren Como was down to make the tackle for Seattle. Rob Delpino is the man who returned the kickoff. We'll see if it's a holding call against the Rams. Might set them back. Another illegal block on the back by 53, the Rams. Both illegal blocks. 10 yards. First down. Down at halftime, you mentioned there shouldn't be any many interceptions by Jim Everett because they're going to do nothing but run the ball. I agree with you. And with the size mismatch, the offensive line against the defensive line here, John Robinson couldn't have written on the board this week a better scenario than, than has happened here in the first half of this football game. Now the Seahawks have got to be very, very aggressive. Try to strip the ball right at the outset. Greg Bell, the NFL touchdown leader with 11 for the season, one today in the backfield. He swings out now and gets a pass from Jim Everett. And he's quickly caught and knocked down by the nose tackle, Joe Nash. So there's a loss on the play as the Rams go from scrimmage to open the second half. Seattle took the opening kickoff of this game. On the first play from scrimmage, the Warner fumble came, and it was quickly turned into a Ram touchdown. They had only 14 yards to travel. Greg Bell got all 14, including the payoff rush from a yard out over the top. And they've extended the lead from there to 24-3. to Here's Bell. Seahawks. Looking for the run, cut it down on a second down and 13 play. There's a gain of about six. Tony Woods, a second year outside linebacker, a former number one draft choice from Pittsburgh, made the tackle. Bell playing with a bruised shoulder, looked at the sideline for a little help, but I think John Robinson wants him in there. The other tailback is. Charles White, he really doesn't have his legs yet from that uh, month-long suspension, working himself back into shape. Charles White, of course, was the National Football League rushing leader a season ago with almost 1,400 yards. Has gained only 46 yards so far this year. On third down and six, Everett lets it go long. A man has the defense beaten, but the ball hangs, and still Anderson comes down with it. 
Willie Anderson from UCLA, a first-year player, described by scouts as flawless over the, on the long ball and fearless over the middle, comes down with a 51-yard bomb. And so Everett goes right back up top. The ball hung, but Anderson made the play. Melvin Jenkins on the coverage. Kirk Knox is watching the replay on the big video board here at Anaheim Stadium. I don't know why he would put himself through that punishment. Ball well thrown by Jim Everett. Anderson does a great job to go up and catch it. Nicknamed Flipper. This is the first meeting ever between the Rams and the Seahawks at Anaheim. Overall in league play, the Rams are 3-0 against Seattle. They've beaten Seattle five times in the season. Here's another strike in the end zone. Wide open was another rookie, Aaron Cox. And Everett, who looks about as good as you can look, throwing strikes all over the field. First a 51-yarder, and now a 33-yarder. And the Seahawks are out of this ball game early in the third quarter. God, Jim Everett has now thrown three touchdown passes in three consecutive games. That one 32 yards to Aaron Cox. And Everett did a great job of avoiding the rush. Did you see him step away from, I think it was Alonzo Mitz? Still had the presence of mind to look downfield and make the completion. As we mentioned earlier, Trump, Everett credits his quickness of foot this season to the loss of 12 pounds. He's playing at a lighter weight. He's 6'5", 212. Lansford, the barefoot kicker, has been perfect all day. He hits again to extend the Rams lead to 31 to 3. Now watch what happens to Jim Everett when he goes back to set up. I believe it's who comes out? It's Tony Woods, 57, not 67, 57. Everett still with that strength of arm. Does not throw a very good spiral, but Cox continues the pattern. His third touchdown throw of the day. Today's game is brought to you by Dodge Cars and Trucks. On the street or off the road, it's the new spirit of Dodge. By Apple Computer, maker of Macintosh personal computers giving you the power to be your best. And by the U.S. Army, learn how to get an edge on life. Be all you can be. Ready to go. Lansford kicks off after another Ram touchdown. Bobby Joe Edmonds takes it inside his five-yard line. He's across the 15, and he is out to the 26-yard line, and two markers are down. It'd be illegal blocks are holding on the return. That was an illegal block, and it was on Robert Del Pino, the guy who was trying to get down there to make the tackle. And I think they're going to Number call it 52, on. 52, illegal block, 10 yards, first down. ML Johnson, a yeah. linebacker. ML Johnson. Don, the big problem that the Seahawks have had to this point with the turnovers, Kelly Stauffer has 10 completions. He has just two to wide receivers. Scancy caught one, and Steve Largent caught one. The other eight. The tight ends are running back, so the Rams are doing a great well, job. They're cornerbacks, not only supporting the run, but also great coverage on those outside receivers. So M.L. Johnson gets caught illegally blocking kick return tackler Robert Del Pino. And now the Seahawks are already in deep trouble. Start with the long field to go. 94 yards in the Ram end zone. Out throwing and throwing well as a completion out to large and out to the 13-yard line. Linebacker Mark Giroux from the University of Washington is there to make the quick hit. Gain of about six on the play. Dennis Manish and our stat man tell us that the longest pass that Kelly Stopper has completed is eight yards. And you find these receivers now, they're catching the ball standing still. If they want a big play, obviously, they got to catch the ball running. Have not been able to do that so far today. Stopper was the sixth player drafted overall in the first round of the 1987 draft, but he refused to sign with the Cardinals and sat out the year. Wright's tomb was subsequently traded to Seattle, where he signed a long-term multi-million dollar contract and has worked into the starting role because of an injury to David Craig. That'll be good for a first down as Jerry Gray makes the tackle on Kurt Warner, who got ahead for four and a half and a first down. Nice block up front by John L. Williams, 32, but these are yards that the Rams will more than happily give to the Seattle Seahawks. No problem whatsoever. Large in at the top of your screen. 
Ryan Blades running off the near flank. He's well covered on a bump and run. They try to go short, and they get it to Warner for a gain of only about two yards. Gary Gray, the cornerback, playing in zone coverage that time, stayed in and made the tackle on the back. But the safety take the Blades was running a deeper pattern. Yeah, Blades had eight catches last week for 145 yards, and Stauffer has not even thrown the ball his direction today, let alone has he not made a catch. Jerry Gray, a fourth-year cornerback from Texas, has had a lot to do with that, the shutting down of Brian Blades. Jerry Gray was a Pro Bowl starter last January. Four wide receivers now for Seattle. Shotgun. On a second and eight play. Spread formation. Here's a swing pass. It goes to John L. Williams. He gets by one tackler and gets out to about the 28-yard line. Gain of about six yards on the play. It'll be third down and two as Fred Strickland, rookie linebacker from Purdue, made the play. Coach Knox now in his 16th season as a head coach in the NFL. Absolutely amazing that the Seattle Seahawks have never beaten the Los Angeles Rams pre-regular or postseason play. Obviously, they've never faced each other in postseason play, but 5-0. and oh. It was Steve Moore right next to him. The offensive coordinator and the quarterback coach for Seattle. Blitz by the Rams. Williams fights close but does not get the first down. He got out to the 29-yard line. So where do you go here, Trump, now? Down in the third quarter, 31-3, to with fourth down and about a foot to go. They're sending out the punting unit. Well, I don't think you want to add insult to injury here. You see the blitz. And one guy that's been all over the place is Michael Stewart. From the 23, the safety there for the blitz. He stops John L. Williams. This is the first punt of the ball game for the Seahawks. I'm not sure this is a good day to put the ball back in the hands of Jim Everett. Well, I, I don't think you want to embarrass yourself by missing the fourth down here. Give the offense some rest. The rest of this game is a lot of tough choices for Chuck Knox. Henry Allard is called on to return the punt. He turns the corner, heads for the 12th man, and goes out of bounds. Melvin Jenkins ran him out. So the Rams go back on offense. On a perfect day in Southern California, their play has been just about the same. Chuck Knox spent 10 years as an NFL assistant before he got the head coaching job with the Rams. His counterpart, John Robinson, was a college assistant for 15 years. One year with the Raiders before he went in as head coach at Southern California for seven very successful seasons, then on to the Rams. Bosworth and Moyer make the tackle on Charles White. Rams huddling at their leisure. Scoreboard numbers all in their favor. It's 31 to 3, Los Angeles, with 8.50 to go in the third quarter. Charles going with that Darth Vader look. One more back's going to that. Two arms on the ball as a lot of Seahawks come a hitting it. Buford McGee got the carry out to the 27 yard line. The ball was pulled loose. The ball was pulled loose, but I think the officials are ruling that he was stopped. That's an interesting call. Seahawks think they have it. Let's see if the official can curve. It's their only chance, and, and Chuck Knox is signaling go to the replay booth, go to the replay booth. You saw his hand signal. He's figured out what the officials are saying. Well, if the replay booth shows, well, this is a great angle. Buford McGee didn't. is the man on the carry, just a straight dive. See if we can see the ball get loose. Yeah, the ball is on the ground. You can see right between Buford McGee's legs. But now what the replay official must prove is, was his forward momentum stopped? We could look at this one forever. Buford McGee did well to come out of that thing walking. Every guy in the Seattle defense got a shot at him. Replay is Dixon Holman, and they're going to let the play stand, I believe. No, I take it back. They're going to give the yeah. ball to the Seattle Seahawks. Seahawk offense is out there. Our producer today for NBC Sports is David Dinkins, Jr. Our director, John Gonzalez. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Michael Weissman. The coordinating producer of NFL football, Ted Nathanson. We're coming to you from Anaheim, California, where Chuck Knox and the Seahawks have a lot of ground to make up. Umpire telling... Ben Dreif, what the reap. Now watch once again. Buford McGee gets the handoff. 
and it comes late but you can see the laces of the football on the ground not yet not yet when his legs spread now watch that ball drop almost like he's laying an egg there's the ball going to the ground there's the laces now, now well, Tampa, if you'll check the field we see a ram offense yeah. coming back out now i think what the replay official said was that his forward progress was stopped they're still huddling though i don't know that they've made the decision the final decision yet well, they got a lot of guys changing places on the field steve Larson gets in there and gives them a a what to? They the talk about the old adage about. The ball was on the ground, so it goes back to the ram. The old adage, Trump, about playing them one at a time, because if you played it two at a time, there'd be too many guys on the field. And that, we had two offenses and two defenses out there. There's no question that this ball is loose, and Buford McGee is still up. Now, if you're a Seattle Seahawks fan, you're going to say there's no way his forward progress is stopped. There's the ball, right down there between his legs. There's no question that ball is on the ground. But what the replay official must rule is whether or not his forward momentum had been stopped. And who, in fact, does come up with a recovery. Now, there's also no argument that the Seahawks came up with the ball. Well, the righteous thing to do would be give it to Seattle because they're out of the game at the moment. Now they're trying to determine exactly where the ball should be placed. That they might give Seattle a couple of scores again. See, this part of the replay is a part that I believe should be looked into and handled better. Here's the back dips talking to Chuck Knox, and obviously Chuck Knox, if the Rams get the ball, he's not buying. Whatever he's saying, no. don't talk to me, he's not buying. John Robinson, smile on his face. And he's looking at some real estate there, and he's even saying, not only did we keep the ball, but we got the first down. John may be hard-pressed to be smiling next week. They have to travel into that Superdome where the Super Saints take on the Rams next Sunday. The Seahawks will be back in the Kingdom. Chuck Fax will have his team ready to go against San Diego. John is saying, hey, we'll take it anywhere. We don't care. You just put it down. Put the first down where we'll go. 8.09 left to play. Third quarter. We got an early report that the whistle blew before the ball popped loose, and now we see that the Rams will maintain possession of the football. And their 31-3 lead. I didn't buy that whistle thing when they started using it three years ago. I'm not going to buy it now. Fine. But I do believe there's an argument that his momentum was stopped. Now, the Seahawks are going to strip the ball carrier as best they possibly can for the rest of the game. First and ten, ready to run the ball. Are the see are the Rams or are they? Here's a long ball. They want it all. That would have been an out pattern, and Everett who can throw it from here to Santa Monica through the fly pattern. Well, here to Santa Monica, son, is a per piece, but he can throw it. No question about that. He was throwing it north. Finals earlier, Trumpy's old team, the Bengals, with their remarkable resurrection this year, leading with a 7-1 record in the AFC Central. Buffalo, another team with a turnabout with a 7-1 record after beating New England. Philadelphia on a closing second touchdown pass by Cunningham beat the Cowboys. And now the Rams looking to go to 5-3. and three. As turning the corner is Charles White knocked out of bounds. Actually, the Rams will go to six and two with a win today. This is when a football game gets ugly. Frustration on both parts. White that time after he hit the sideline was shoved. Added on to the end of the play. Late hit out of bounds, number 29. 15, that's the first down. White goes to the sideline, and he's pretty much conceding. This is all I want, kids. I don't want any more. And then Dwayne Harper gives him a shove. Rookie from South Carolina State. Giving it his best shot for the cause, which is a, probably a futile one at this point. Rams 31, Seattle 3, with 7 minutes and 48 seconds to play in the third quarter. Jim Everett, the Ram quarterback. Look at this. The Jets, an underdog, have opened up a 30 to 10 lead on Miami at halftime. And the Pack out in the, has tied up Washington now. 
Three Biasucci field goals have extended Indianapolis's lead. Here's a pitch back to Charles White. He's ahead on a first down carry out to the 49-yard line of Seattle. Jim Everett started the day with a quarterback rating of 103.8, third best in the NFL. It's going to rise markedly this week as he now has three touchdown passes today, 19 for the season, no interceptions today, only five for the season. He has nine touchdown passes in his last three games, right. including this one. Ryan Bosworth on the sideline, I guess, resting his shoulder. Buford McGee takes it straight ahead on a second down and six play, and he got ahead for a gain of about four yards. The Rams with their big advantage, 31 to three, content to run the ball with six minutes and 50 seconds to play in the third quarter. Seahawks going to back up defensive troops now. This Everett has shown an inclination to let it go long, even with the big lead. Time for guys to earn their letter. When you trail 31 to 3 or you lead 31 to 3, you get some of those underclassmen in there, you know? Right. You may have to count on them later in the season or next year. You also get some offensive plays you wouldn't get up there in the same division and have to play again this year. Markers down all over as the pitch back went to Charles White. Ball start number 67. Five yards, third down. Duval Love, the right guard, was called for the illegal motion for Los Angeles. An excellent offensive line in front of Everett, and they protected him well. And now into the eighth game of the season, he's been sacked but 13 times. I think that's the NFL low. I think they've got Marino more net in Miami. Irv Pankey. And Jackie Slater are the veteran tackles. Newberry in love with the guards. Doug Smith, an excellent center. He's been to the Pro Bowl for the last five seasons. Everett lets it go. Oh, just broken up. Jenkins just tipped it away. Aaron Cox would still be running had he not gotten a piece of the ball. He was open and ready to go the distance. Well, I'll tell you what, though. If Jenkins gets his hand on that football that's got six points written all over it. Everett kind of lets his ball sail a little bit. Jenkins is able to cut underneath. Aaron Cox does a good job of making sure there is no interception. Rams first punt of the day here, Don. First punch for the Rams, only the second of the day. Seattle's booted it once. The scoreboard is all Los Angeles. It's 31 to 3 in the third quarter. 5.47 to play in the quarter. Rich Camarillo into punt. Hits it long. Spiral. Flag on the play. They ran into the punter. Automatic first down for the... I take that back. They get five yards. They can take a shot at him on that play because that's not enough to get him a first down. It'll be fourth and two. They'll punt it again. Dwayne Harper was the man that Number hit him. 23 that is a rule change. Finally, not a first down. John Robinson is saying, we'll refuse the penalty. Now, that's rare, but that's what this new rule change has created. It used to be any time you made contact with the punter and you were the one that ran into the punter, then it was an automatic first down. Now, just a five-yard penalty. The Rams refuse it. Seattle gets the ball at their own 16. 5.39 to play. Rams lead 31-3. Seahawks ball. Let me correct myself. I said Dwayne Harper ran into the punter. Actually, it was Patrick Hunter who ran into the punter. So Seattle has the ball. Shovel pass. Shovel pass it is. And running in the open field is John L. Williams. But lo, there is another yellow flag down at the line of scrimmage. And the Ram is signaling holding against Seattle. Michael Stewart finally runs him out of bounds. And almost without fail every time the Seahawks come up with a big play that a 35 yard offensive pass. holding number 54 the 10 yard penalty, penalty brings it back. Down. if they ever place another time capsule into the earth at the Seattle World's Fair site tape of this game will not be in it they got Grant Fiesel on the hold 
Number 54, 8 for 98. My goodness, no stat has looked good today for the Seattle Seahawks, and no part of this game has looked good. The weather about as good as it gets. Mid-70s, cloudless skies, no wind, perfect playing conditions, and the Rams have benefited. More by Seattle mistakes than by the good climate in Southern California as Los Angeles has opened up a 31-3 lead. Stauffer from the end zone fires a hard ball out, taken down nicely by Williams out to the 14-yard line. But it came on a first and 18 play. Next Sunday, join NBC Sports for another week of exciting football action beginning at 12.30 Eastern with NFL Live. Then the dogs will be barking at Cleveland Stadium as Boomer Esiason and the 7-1 Cincinnati Bengals come to town to go against Bernie Kosar and the Browns. A crucial AFC Central Division showdown. Plus regional action. Check local listings for the game and time in your area. Now Stopper on second down and 11. Sets in the shotgun and fades to his 12. Here's a throw and a catch. Down with the ball to Scanzi and he's ahead for a first down. Well done by the veteran wide receiver Paul Scanzi. James Washington knocked him out of bounds, but the Seahawks do convert a first down. But 4.46 to play in the third quarter. They're down 31 to 3. One thing I can say about Kelly Stopper, keeping his composure, throws the ball very, very hard. Good tight spiral on it. That's a nice, easy ball for the receivers to catch, and that was the longest pass completion of the day by the Seahawks, 12 yards. Seattle having trouble converting third downs this year when they were number one in the NFL last season. Here is a misconnection out in the snap again. Gary Jeter goes back and pats Stoff around the shoulder. That's gonna be against the offense. Offer called it on one number, told everybody else another number. Diesel didn't snap it, and the offense was moving all over the place. So that's the tenth penalty against the Seahawks so far today. Normally, the Seahawks a very, very conservative. Ball very start well on the offense. Five-yard penalty. And and. It's also a team that makes very few mistakes under normal circumstances, but the last two weeks, they've made them. Interesting year for Seattle. They started off with a very impressive win on the road at Denver, 21-14. Came back and blew out Kansas City. Then separate successive losses at San Diego and to San Francisco. Came back to beat Atlanta and then beat Cleveland. Then lost by a point to New Orleans. Today, their longest day of the season as the swing pass comes out. And here's another penalty marker. Had lost to San Diego, John. A devastating loss. That and of really course, was. last week, a game they should have won, could have won. They let get away at the loss to New Orleans. Kevin Green, the linebacker, he's on Mike Wilson. This is a little screen that Green plays very, very well. Stopper still able to get the ball to John L. Williams, and I think John L. Williams. 91 personal foul, hit the man out of bounds. 15 as a first down. Yeah, but you know what they missed? It looked like John L. Williams grabbed a hold of the face mask of the tackler. Somebody illegally blocked the photographer. Big Markoff sets the ball all the way out to the 37-yard line. Don, watch this once again. When John L. Williams... See the defensive back, he grabs a hold of his face mask or puts his hand right in the face mask. That's illegal. But then Kevin Green shoved John L. Williams out of bounds and the Rams are penalized. Anaheim Stadium holds almost 70,000 for football and is just about packed. Rams leading 31 to 3. 423 to go third quarter. To the run go the Seahawks on first down and Kurt Warner doesn't get much but a load of left end Doug Reed. Doug Reed, Alvin Wright, and Sean Miller across the defensive front. Jets now the 30 to 17 advantage over Miami. It was 30 to 10 at halftime. Cleveland holding to a six point advantage over Phoenix. Bernie Kosar came back today and threw for the first touchdown of the day for Cleveland. Green Bay. Loser of five straight, many by lopsided scores, now comes back on consecutive weeks to win going away against New England. Won again last Sunday, and now they've come from behind to lead Washington. Beat Minnesota badly last week did the Packers. Here's a straight-ahead run when there's nobody there on a second down and ten play. 
and Stoffers ahead to the 42-yard line. Leroy Irvin and James Washington knocked him down. Did not look too swift to foot there. Kind of fell over himself a little bit. Last week, Seattle ran a couple of quarterback draws. It looks like Kelly Stoffer is going to be a lot better quarterback if he stays in the pocket. If they have to rely on his running, then they're going to be in a game where they're down 31 to 3 in the third quarter. Third down and six for Stoffer out of the shotgun, looking deep. That's Ooh. a go. He had an open large and running a crossing pattern, but didn't see him as the defense came to whack him just as he released the ball. Meisner was in to make the hit. Greg Meisner, a pass rusher. Nice little game run up front by the Los Angeles Rams. You can see him twisting right at the outset. And then Stauffer tries to set up. He can't really finish because Meisner is right there in his rib cage. That's why they pay those guys all the money they make. And it ain't enough. But in most cases in this day and age, it ain't bad. Leroy Irvin back deep now as the punt comes. It is hit downfield by Rodriguez. Leroy Irvin steps under it and fair catches the ball at the 27-yard line of the Rams. And with 2.57 left to play in the third quarter, the Rams will take over the ball first and 10, leading the game 31-3 over the Seattle Seahawks. A little lady, perhaps a Seahawk fan, making a silent statement on what she's seen today. Not too exhilarating for the Hawk fan. I have a feeling she's been asleep for quite a while, too. We have 2.57 to go in the third quarter. It's 31 to 3. The Rams are in the lead. Everett play fakes, takes a look long, fires downfield, makes the connection with Aaron Cox. He's a fine looking rookie from Dorsey High School in Los Angeles in Arizona State. First year player. 18 yards on the pickup. Well done. One scored on a 95 yard scoring play against USC. Next Saturday, join NBC Sports World for one of the most thrilling events in the sport of King, the 1988 Breeders' Cup steeplechase. This quarter million dollar race is the richest event of its kind in the world. And with the challenging grounds of Fair Hill Racecourse in Maryland, it's definitely a test of great horsepower. One of the signal events in thoroughbred racing, the Breeders' Cup on NBC Sports. Next Saturday, it's the steeplechase. Charles White gets the call on a first down carry. And he is ahead for about three yards. Darren Como made the stop. Charles White, after that month's suspension now, has been used in the past primarily as a pass receiver or a pass protector for Jim Everett. Now he gets a chance to get his legs back, get some game experience when this one's basically out of reach. White, a comeback story. More than once. Buford McGee gets the run. Crosses midfield on a second down and six play. Won the 1979 Heisman Trophy to Charles White. Was a fair prospect coming out of high school in Los Angeles. He averaged 9.5 yards a carry. When he went to Cleveland, of course, he tore up his ankle as Achilles tendon came back was released and then came out here to the Rams and was the NFL's leading rusher last year. He's definitely had an up and down career. Everybody hoping he can keep it together. He's a terrific guy. He and his wife Judy, the parents of six children. Of course, last year was his great comeback story when he rallied to lead the league in rushing. Charles White gets the call again on third and short. He lunges and on the toss play gets ahead for a first down. That was the toss play that Eric Dickerson made famous here with the Rams. The only difference, of course, is that Greg Bell and Charles White don't line up eight yards deep in the offensive backfield. They don't have the foot speed that Eric Dickerson. That was those the amazing the, thing about Dickerson. He had to run eight yards just to yep. get even. And those are the, the little adjustments that John Robinson and his, and his offensive coaches have made to this offense when Dickerson left that have really produced a very solid offense once again. Last week, they get beat by San Francisco, but it took a 190-yard rushing performance by Roger Craig to beat him. Neil Lomax beat him, and he beat him by throwing for, for close to 400 yards. This is one of the finest teams you'll find in the NFL. White running hard, and Charles White looking in good form on a first down carry. Runs the ball down to the 29-yard line of Seattle. 
The White rips off a 10-yard gainer. Bruce Schultz finally makes the tackle. White does a great job of cutting back here. In the toss sweep, John Robinson started running that when he was the head coach at USC. And White waits for the block, cuts back inside. Very close to a 10-yard pickup. Going to be about six inches short. So it gives uh, Everett a nice play call. Second down and a very short. But back up to Jim Everett's another Purdue quarterback, Mark Herman. Look at the Rams have done on first down today, Trump. That's why they're winning. That and the turnovers. Very obvious. The clock is going to expire here to the end of the third quarter, but Rams first down yardage, both running and passing. Really devastated the Seahawks. So the Rams, with another touchdown in the third quarter, extend their halftime lead to where it now stands at 31 to 3. And we'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Rams are obviously going to win this game, but if they lose this guy in the meantime, it's a tremendous loss. Tom Newberry just had his knee checked by Dr. Robert Curlin, the Rams orthopedic surgeon. Looks like he's definitely out for the rest of the game. Second and short, handoff goes to Del Pino, who caught a 37-yard touchdown pass in the first half. The rookie from Missouri. Grew up in Dodge City, Kansas. There with Wyatt Earp. At this point, the Rams have offensively owned this game. You just saw their numbers on first down. Time of possession, very misleading. 348 yards by the Rams. The three turnovers in the first half. The big key for the Rams to put this game out of reach. Oftentimes, there's very few things in this world of less significance than time of possession. Particularly today. When you get it fast like these guys have got it. Too long. Somebody got a souvenir on the one hop. He, he's probably not going to have it for long. Aaron Cox ran the fly pattern. Everett Long out of the end zone. Patrick Cutter was running stride for stride with him. We have 14-15 left to play in the fourth quarter. Jim Everett played high school football in Albuquerque, New Mexico, where he was also, in addition to being a standout quarterback, an all-state safety. And he went to Purdue, where he set three NCAA single-season passing records. Became the third player picked in the 1986 draft. And Bo Jackson, who was picked by Tampa Bay, and Tony Casillas, who was picked by Atlanta. Charles White keeps it inbounds on a first down carry. White's down to the 26-yard line. David Wyman on the stop. Now, see, I think the NFL ought to institute a rule that when you lead 31 to 3 for the rest of the game, especially in the fourth quarter, you are required by NFL rule to run the ball and stay in bounds. The team behind can do anything at once. The team ahead. Just run it. Do not throw it. You think that'll pass? Well, I think we're instituting that rule right now. Okay, let's do that. I think Coach Robinson put that in even before you said it. 13.35 to play. Everett with third and three coming up. Giles White in the backfield with Del Pino. Cox running a fly. Up the middle they go. Penalty markers and an incomplete pass. This Cox is some weapon. Man, can this kid run or what? Robert Del Pino was the intended receiver. That time, Paul Moyer, 21, came with the blitz. Flag down, illegal procedure, Los Angeles. We got Newberry with a lateral strain of his left knee. There's the orthopedic surgeon, Robert Curlin. Motion on the offense, two men moving at the same time. They declined the penalty. It's going to be fourth down. If he can get up and walk on it, it's not a serious, real serious injury. Put weight on it. It's the right leg that he has injured, has iced. Rams want to attack some more on, and they have Lansford out to try a 43-yard field goal. He is 9 for 12 on field goal attempts this year. Block, block, and they'll be running with it. Goodbye, he's out of here. On the run with the ball. 
is the Seattle Seahawks. He's going to take it the distance. Vernon Dean, the sprinter, the former Washington Redskin. Ryan Bosworth was the man who blocked it. And Vernon Dean, as the Rams try to pack on more points, instead gets shoved right back at them. 13-14 to play, and the Seahawks have their first touchdown of the day. And it comes as a result of a blocked field goal. They had that happen to them last week. Pressure comes from a lot of different places. Ryan Bosworth gets through there, gets his hand on it, ends up being a 63-yard blocked field goal return for a touchdown for the Seattle Seahawks. So it happens fast. Ironically, it's the special teams, a defensive unit that's on the field for, for Seattle when they get their first touchdown of the day. Holohan, the holder, there's just too much penetration. Bosworth way in there, and he makes the block. Extra point up, and good. Five yards, Kennedy. Delay before he's getting the football, five yards. Too much time on an extra point? Are you serious? Apparently he is. Let me have my book. I got to write that one down. This is a first. Again on the block, Rusty Tillman, the special teams coach of the Seattle Seahawks, never gives up on a play. Bosworth's penetration inside bounces perfectly to Vernon Dean 63 yards later. As you said, Don, Seattle's first touchdown. Room service bounce. Just the way you order it. Extra point by Norm Johnson is up and good. A lot of time left. 13-14 to play. And it's now a 31-10 game. The Rams in command still. Today's game is brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By Mazda and the exciting new Mazda cars and trucks for 1989. And by Delta Airlines, we love to fly, and it shows. Special teams coach Rusty Tillman shouting instructions now. Could be an onside kick uh, try by the Seattle Seahawks, who just scored after running back a blocked field goal attempt. There's the onside attempt. Man, they got it. They no, no, no. Down. Yeah, I guess no it control. Out. Did not have control. Just like a pass reception, Don, you've got to have control. Well executed by Norm Johnson. He was. That, that kick is out of bounds. Rams will get the ball at that spot. Hands were on it, but the feet weren't in. This is where you do not expect it on the onside kick. He does a great job. And they just can't get it before it goes out of bounds. It's Patrick, it's Dwayne Harper who gets his hands on the ball. The replay is probably going to look at this to see if there's any possession. Went out of bounds at the short street kick, five yard penalty, and they kick it again. They'll make him kick it again. Could go on for a while. That was a nice try though. Yes, it was. 13-10 left to play in the game. Dwayne Harper almost got a hold of that ball. The only problem was Norm Johnson kicked it a little too hard. They had the Rams receiving team confused. You can see Rusty Tillman. That's what we wanted. And it didn't. This was right after the extra point. Rusty Tillman got them all together. Nice idea. Almost perfectly executed. Again, after the five-yard penalty, back to the 30-yard line. Norm Johnson, the veteran kicker from UCLA. Now the Rams put their hands team out there. We've got nine guys up within 15 yards of the 40-yard line. You can't try it again, though. And they don't. A high spinning kickoff that's going to spin down into the hands of Charles White. Is out to the 30 or the 31 yard line, and there the Rams will go on offense first down and 10, leading the game 31 to 10. Dwayne Harper was on the play. 
As we check the scoreboard, Jets now have extended their lead to 37 to 23. They went in as a big underdog to the Dolphins. Cleveland holding to a six-point advantage over the Cardinals at Phoenix. Redskins and Packers tied up at Green Bay. And in the fourth quarter, Indianapolis holding to a 9-0 lead over San Diego. The next opponent of the Seahawks. San Diego goes to the Kingdom in Seattle next Sunday. Rams go to New Orleans next week. Downfield throw. Connection is made. And is Henry Ellard with another reception out to the 48-yard line. A 16-yard gain. Patrick Hunter again on coverage. And this is the way the game began. The Rams throwing that out pattern that the Seahawks have had great difficulty covering all day long. Ellard, Big six day. catches now, 89 yards. And Everett, a standout day also. 12 and a half minutes to go. A first down coming up now for the Los Angeles Rams. Everett has thrown the ball 22 times, has hit 15 for 260 yards and three touchdowns. Charles White turns it up. Up to the defense, down to the Seattle 40-yard line. Goes Osborn and Charles White. A first down carry, good for a Los Angeles Ram first down. Backup linebackers in now for Seattle. Darren Como and M.L. Johnson combined on the stop. Charles White, White running well, Trump. 55 yards on nine carries. Bosworth is out of the ball game, and the offensive line, even with Tom Newberry out, still doing a great job manhandling that Seattle Seahawks defensive line. They've just not been able to keep that corner. Rams have gotten it almost all day long. I set. White swings out of the backfield, gets a throw from Jim Everett. Nicely caught by Charles White. He's knocked out of bounds at the 40. Paul Moyer, number 21. Strong safety for the Seahawks made the stop. White came out of USC primarily as a tailback. Hadn't really caught the ball much his entire career, but as you can see, he's a very talented athlete. Good body control, spins 360 degrees, makes the catch for not much yards, but he does make the catch. Backup quarterback for Seattle, Jeff Kemp. Could get some time here as the pitchback goes. Charles White again, coming out of second down and 10 play. He is ahead to the 33-yard line of the Seahawks where Darren Como knocked him down. So White looking to get back in game form, getting a lot of work here in the second half. With 11-10 to play, his team has been in command throughout. Seahawks were down 24-3 at halftime. They now trail the Rams 31-10. Uh, Jeff Kemp is warming up on the sideline, but he's warming up with Kelly Stopper. I think of the two, you're pretty much going to stay with Kelly Stopper here because he's your quarterback of the future. Take him out now. I don't think anything is gained. You leave him in, he may get a long reception down the field. Something for him to build on. Third down and four. Throw and a catch. To the tight end it goes and Holohan gets down to the 27-yard line. Your handed tight end with his 24th catch of the year. He's been in the end zone twice. Keith Holohan was recruited to Notre Dame as a quarterback out of Liverpool, New York. The best hands on the team was switched to a wideout. Bosworth on the sideline resting his left shoulder that's been bothering him all season. He wants to play with it. It was probably senseless for him to be in there now, so... Tom Catlin gets him out of the lineup. Maybe he'll feel a little pressure next week against San Diego. Ellard in motion. Charles White with the run. Right at the defense. And Charles White takes a first down carry down to the 20-yard line of the Seahawks. Gain on the play of seven yards before backup linebacker Darren Miller, a rookie from Tennessee, number 91, made the stop. And the, the reason that play has worked all day long is Doug Smith... Duval Love, Robert Cox, the offensive line of the Los Angeles Rams have done a great job on the middle three, the nose tackle and the two inside linebackers. A lot of short traps have been very successful today for the Rams. Offensive line, veteran and very much in sync. Another trap lock now, but they go to the throw off. It's taking the rumble. There's a free ball on the field. 
It does draw a crowd back at the three-yard line, and it looks like Seattle has the ball. Looked like Darren Miller came up with the ball. Ellard caught it. It was a catch indeed. The lost possession, so it's a catch of fumble in the Seahawk recovery with 9.06 to play. It is Darren Miller who comes up with the football. Tony Woods also on the play. Play action fake. He catches it. And then he gets absolutely hammered by Eugene Robinson. Ball loose and it kind of bounces around there a little bit. It looks like Tony Woods, Tony is Woods the man comes to get up credit with it. for the fumble recovery. Rams are in command, but the Seahawks are still battling as here they strip the ball from Henry Ellard and Tony Woods comes in number 57 and gets the fumble recovery. Yeah, but this is pretty much an indication of the day. Seahawks get the ball, but they start at their own four yard line. From the end zone, Stauffer lets a long ball go, and it's going to be intercepted by Jerry Gray, and he's not done. And now the ruling he's down. So again, we have back-to-back -back turnovers, something we had earlier in the game. We've seen it all, and it all hasn't been good for the Seattle Seahawks. As Stauffer let the long ball go, and it was picked off by the Los Angeles Rams. Well, where do you go from here, Mr. Trump? You've been on the short end of some of these long scores. Uh, you try to go straight to the plane. <laughs> if you're the head coach, you try to consider maybe we won't show the highlights of this game or the film of this game next week. There's very little good that Seattle Seahawks have done. And, of course, when in desperation you begin to throw the ball deep, a young quarterback is going to turn the ball over like that. I think the one thing Seattle has to come out of this game with is a feeling that Kelly Stouffer is still the quarterback of the future, still a quarterback they can go to. So they can't just turn him loose on those long passes. Well, we know he can throw it a long way. That was way downfield. And here is a give straight up the middle, and uh, Robert Del Pino, a rookie runner, takes it to the 46-yard line. Here is Kelly Stauffer dropping back. I tell you, the Rams are very good defenders. Perfect coverage, and it's picked off. Running back with the ball for the Los Angeles Rams was Anthony Newman, actually. It wasn't Gray. Newman, the rookie, was in there and got it. Well, the one thing the Seahawks have had real trouble doing all day long is getting the ball to their wide receivers. And once again, in the 10th way down the field, and this time it's intercepted. Second down and short. Handoff again to Charles White. Hitting hard, and the Seahawks come hitting perhaps a bit late. No flag. Charles White on a first on a second down and short play, gained 10 yards in a first down. Eugene Robinson on the tackle. Charles White approaching 100 yards. 12 carries, 77 yards on the afternoon. Dorsett of the Broncos, who wears one of those sun visors, says the defense can't look at your eyes and see where you're heading. Also keep the fingers out of the eyes. Yeah, there's <laughs> scrapes and scratches on the face. And it's harder to grab the face mask, too, so it helps in that fashion. White on first and ten doesn't get much. His 13th carry of the day for no gain, but he has 77 yards on the day. And I'll tell you another thing about those shields that players wear on their helmets like Charles White does. One game for a running game, uh, running back, and that thing is shot. That thing will look like it's been out in traffic. Scraped and scratched, and it's got dings in it, and you can't see through it. You take a look at a linebacker's helmet after the game. They, most of them are sprayed every week. Some of them come off with face masks that are bent in shapes that they can't even get the helmet on or off. These guys are nuclear powered nowadays in the NFL. Put on hits, they have those backs looking out the ear hole of the helmet. And those guys stay in the game. They carry it the next time. They don't even leave the field. Next Saturday, NBC's Golf Tour 88 will be in sunny Orlando, Florida for live final round coverage of the Walt Disney World Oldsmobile Classic. 1987 Player of the Year, Paul Azinger. And Fuzzy Zeller lead the field of golfing grades scheduled to compete. That's next Saturday on NBC Sports. The Walt Disney World Classic final round. Here in Anaheim, we're in the shadow of Disneyland. 
wasn't what Kelly Stauffer, who you just saw on the sideline, was expecting. At least the ball game. And now the throw off the flank as the catch is made down to the 25-yard line by Willie Anderson. Second-round draft choice out of UCLA with two exceptional catches today. Melvin Jenkins made the stop. The Rams get a first down with a clock running and five minutes and 35 seconds left to play. Don, there is very little the Rams have tried today that has not worked. The slant pass because of the soft coverage by the cornerbacks. Willie Anderson watching the big screen TV. He's uh, watching that catch and likes what he sees. The running of the Los Angeles Rams has been just the way John Robinson would draw it up on the board you hope for. Everything has gone right for the Rams today. And they'll make the turn to the second half of the season with a 6-2 and two record. They go back to the run. Del Pino, the rookie, Delpino takes it straight ahead. A lot of pro scouts had him projected as high as a second round draft choice and some of the combine workouts Del Pino did not show blazing speed and he wasn't taken until the fifth round but he's played like a first rounder he plays on every special team one of their leading tacklers on the special team an excellent blocker a fine receiver we already saw that on the touchdown catch in the first quarter you can find places like that on your team whether he's got foot speed or not. Wide to the left is Michael Young. Anderson off the right flank as a penalty marker goes down, and Charles White takes it inside the 20, but the play has been whistled down. I think we just talked about it. Robert Del Pino, I believe, left early. Right tackle, false start. Right offense. tackle. Right tackle. I, it looked like Del Pino left early, too. Well, as long as one does, it might as all well do. Sure, sure. Robert Cox, number 72, left early. He's in for Jackie Slater. Earlier today, the divisional leaders in New Orleans, the Saints beat the Los Angeles Raiders 20 to 6. So the Saints make the turn at the halfway point of the season with a 7 and 1 record. And they'll have a one game lead over Los Angeles at day's end. The 49ers were also at 5 and 2 through 7 games. They'll play tomorrow night at Chicago. Here's a handoff going to Charles White. On second down and 11, he gets to the 21 yard line. It's an excellent division. The AFC West at the halfway point of the season will have co-leaders with 500 records. Denver and Seattle both will be 4-4. Four and four. Wasn't that long ago when four of the five teams in the West were over 500 in the AFC West. We look at all the scores today. Giants came back to beat Atlanta. Buffalo goes to 7-1. and one. A major story. Pittsburgh rising up to smash Denver today. Philadelphia on a closing second touchdown pass by Randall Cunningham edges Dallas. Jets continue to lead the favored Dolphins, and now Phoenix has rallied to take the lead over Cleveland. Green Bay and Washington tied. David Wyman hollers and rolls down Charles White. Game clock down to three minutes in running. 31 to 10, the Los Angeles Rams in the lead. They led 10 0 after the first quarter, they led 24 to 3 at halftime. After three quarters, they had extended their lead to 31 to three. Uh, blocked field goal attempt and subsequent return by Vernon Dean to the Seahawks in the fourth quarter gave the Seahawks their first and only touchdown of the day, and that's how it stands now. It is 31 to 10 Rams. Folks uh, are leaving for the parking lot, and the reason they're leaving late is that you don't cook sushi, you see, so they don't have to leave early and wait the barbecue. Fumble by Holohan, touchback. They had a ball at the 20. You lost me on that sushi and departure story. Well, normally you hit in a 31 to 10 game, the home fans leave a little earlier than normal, but here on the West Coast, they all eat sushi. You don't have to cook it. You see, it's raw fish. They don't leave the eat the bar, they don't like the barbecue, so they leave late and still have their their post-game uh, repast. You understand? Don't ask me tough questions, just believe me. They don't leave here early. But they are leaving, and with a smile on their faces, these Ram fans, as the Rams continue to dominate. This is Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy back at Anaheim Stadium. 2.25 left to play. The Seattle Seahawks trailing in the game 31-10 to 10, have just taken the ball back on a fumble recovery in the end zone. They come right out into the shotgun formation with Jeff Kemp at quarterback. He throws out of the backfield to John L. Williams, or this... 
is a backup runner in the game now as they go to Tommy Agee, a backup fullback. And the Seahawks also go to shock troops as the clock is running. This will take it down to the two-minute warning this play. They get the snap away as a penalty marker goes down and Kemp throws down the run, makes a connection, running with the ball and moving well with it is rookie Tommy Kane. He's out to the 37-yard line. Penalty marker is down, though, and the clock is down to 1.54 to play in the game. For those of you wondering, the two-minute warning cannot take place until it's two minutes or less. So if you get the snap off at 2.01, then you're going to get the clock to stop after the play. Illegal this motion. flag is on the five-yard penalty in the second well, now we'll take the two-minute warning. Two-minute warning. Two-minute warning is given, and we'll be back to Anaheim Stadium after this. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League and it is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Los Angeles Rams and the National Football League is prohibited. This game is the property of the National Football League of the Seattle Seahawks and the Los Angeles Rams. All rights reserved. I think, though, if you were the Seahawks and you had one to throw away, you'd be more than happy to give this one up. This is where Sam and he might throw it back. Yes, yes, this is not a keeper. 154 to go. Jeff Kemp in the shotgun. Spread formation with wide receivers double to either side. Up the middle throw, the connection to Brian Blades, who had such a big day last week, the second round draft choice out of Miami. That's his first catch today. 21st of the season. He caught eight balls for 145 yards and a touchdown versus New Orleans. Kemp fires another strike as the Rams are in a deep zone coverage. This to Scanzi. It's good for a first down. 131 to play. Timeout taken by Seattle. The Rams now in their prevent defense. They'll give them those short receptions down the field. Let me tell you a story about this stadium. About 25 years ago, the left end zone used to be open. It used to be just a baseball stadium. And outside was a huge A with a halo over about the... That's about 20 feet from the top. There you can see it just at the top. I was playing golf one day with Clyde Wright, who was a pitcher for the California Angels, and Jim Fragosi, uh, who was managed in several places in Major League Baseball. And they were a little bit under the weather. Made a bet. Clyde Wright said it could hit a golf ball through the A and above the halo. And Fragosi took him up on it. We came out here. He bribed his way in with the guard. Stood at home plate in the second shot. Went through the A and above the halo. This has but been after a dosage of adult beverages? or uh, Several. A, a mega dose of adult beverages on their part, not mine. No. Here comes Kemp on the run. Crosses midfield. Turns it up and gets out of bounds. So Jeff Kemp with a chance to play. The eight-year veteran from Dartmouth. No touchdown throws this year and four interceptions for Jeff Kemp. Running well, a 21-yard gain. The report card, Stouffer, not bad except for the three interceptions. One of the things that they liked about Kelly Stouffer is that he had not turned the ball over. He had not thrown the interceptions. Warner's yards came primarily in the first quarter. Everett was spectacular. His third straight game with three touchdowns. Jim Everett, big time. Yep, out of the shotgun. Deepens his drop, throws and connects. Tommy Kane, who played at Syracuse and was drafted in the third round by Seattle, makes the play. Now, there certainly should be no argument for those fans in Seattle as to who should start a quarterback next week. Kemp is playing against a free bet defense. The Rams are allowing those short completions. Ellie Stauffer, until Dave Craig gets back and healthy, I believe, should be the starting quarterback of this team. Jeff, Jeff Kemp slides to a halt and three guys hit him anyway. He does call a timeout. The Seahawks have just one remaining and too much ground to make up. They're out of road as they're down 31 to 10. 51 ticks left on the clock here at Anaheim Stadium. Don Fricky with Bob Trumpy. The Los Angeles Rams have been in command throughout. They now hold to a 31 to 10 lead. And now it's time for the most valuable player award sponsored by Budweiser. 
And today's MVP is quarterback Jim Everett from the Los Angeles Rams. Budweiser will make a contribution to the United Way on behalf of all the MVPs selected in today's game. Thrown nine touchdown passes in his last three games, including this one. For the season, he has 19 touchdown passes, only five interceptions, and in eight games, he's been sacked just 13 times. Now Kemp, on a quarterback draw, takes it towards the goal line. Yes, Kemp's not down. Here's a penalty marker down. He goes into the end zone, but it might not go. Another flag against Seattle. Jeff Kemp now just learning the bad news. 41 seconds left to play. The illegal block. The Seahawks will get the first down. It'll be from a, the spot of the foul. The old offense. That's a 10-yard penalty. From, from right there, let's see what it is if you get back 10. To those viewers who have just watched us, joined us to watch the Goonies, please stay That's tuned. The, the Goonies down, program yeah. will be seen immediately following football, except for Mountain and Pacific time zone stations where the program, the Goonies, will be seen at its regular time. That's reassuring. Except for Mountain and Pacific time zone stations. <laughs> Coach Knox will rally his troops back to come to play another day. They'll be out in the Kingdom, sold out, season ticket basis with 29,000 on the waiting list. They'll have that group from Alaska, too. Every <laughs> weekend it. they travel to Great Seattle trip. to watch him play. Well, and a catch to Brian Blades. There's the comeback pattern. This time it's Jeff Kemp executing it. Hard thrown ball, and the ball is down to the four yard line with 34 seconds to play. Some of the headliners this week, Trump, Randall Cunningham, you see with a TD pass, four seconds left, Eagles beat Dallas. James Brooks gets three scores for your old team, even with a broken hand as they beat Houston in a key game, 44-21. Carl Banks, 16-yard fumble return for a touchdown, helped the Giants rally to beat Atlanta. First down and goal with just seconds remaining, 34 ticks left. 31 to 10 Rams lead. Seahawks trying to score. A.G. An Auburn back runs and is driven back. Making the stop on the play was rookie linebacker Fred Strickland, number 53 from Purdue, who had a standout college career, including 22 tackles in one game against Notre Dame. Seahawks out of timeout, so Jeff Kemp just throws the ball into the ground to give his team another chance. Fifteen seconds left. So at the halfway point of the season, the NFC West, indeed a formidable division with the New Orleans Saints off to a 7-1 start. The Rams will be 6-2 at day's end. 49ers looking to go to that mark. They're 5-2 heading into Chicago. That won't be easy. No. There. game believe it or not with a four and four record yet as a first place team in the AFC West incomplete at the end zone no line throw coach John Robinson with the peaceful demeanor of a man whose team is cleaned up the only question John Robinson will have all day is whether Tom Newberry is hurt will he be able to play next week when they go to New Orleans to play the Saints as you look at the score Lions won one today. Every pro scouting combine says the number one rated player in America right now is without question quarterback Troy Aikman of UCLA. He'll be the first player picked in April is the way things are now. This is a free ball in the end zone and it looks like the Rams got it back. Our thanks to spotters Jason Stein and Steve Richmond and to our NBC statistician Dennis Manishian. Our producer today has been David Dinkins, Jr., our director, John Gonzalez, the executive producer of NBC Sports, Michael Weissman, the coordinating producer of NFL football, Ted Nathanson, associate director, Ray Benassi. It goes as an interception in the end zone. 
So the Rams get one more snap with one second to go. And Mark Herman comes in for the snap. Now this ball bounces off the official. Kemp is waiting, throws it. It stays in the air. Intercepted in the end zone. James Washington. Rams ball. So that'll close it out. Our stage manager today, Francesca Bellini, as the game clock shows just one second to play. And the Los Angeles Rams will hold to a 31 to 10 count at the end. They put it away in truth early in the day. This is the don't make a mistake. Down goes the knee. Mark Herman gets a little time towards his letter coming in for the last kneel down. And Coach Robinson heads off the field. A winner again today. Six of eight times in the first half of the season. Old friend Chuck Knox. And that is the story from Anaheim. We'll return to Anaheim Stadium. This is Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy back at Anaheim Stadium with the Los Angeles Rams. Took command early, capitalizing on Seattle mistakes, and went on to win the game 31 to 10. So the Rams are back in form after losing Trump their last two games at home. Seattle could get very little going. Couldn't get the ball thrown down the field. On the other side of the coin, Jim Everett was spectacular. His third straight game with three touchdowns. Immediately following football coverage, we will present the Goonies program, except for Mountain and Pacific stations where the program will be seen at its regular time. Now for Bob Trumpy, this is Don Crickey at Anaheim Stadium as winners tell jokes and losers say deal, Coach Robinson and quarterback Everett. This has been a presentation of NBC Sports, the leader in innovative sports television.